And hello and welcome back to the Noodling Notes. This is season two and you might ask, um, hey, you didn't complete season one. Yes, that's true. But right now I'm taking a break from the Leibniz binary subsystem. Um, there will come content in the future and also in this new season there will be um, content of it we use it as a tool because this season and that's a topic I'm interested in right now um, is about sound design and what is sound design what aspects um, are into sound design and I'm not really sure where this is going, um, but I want to try and I want to start with um, sound designing bass. Because I think um, in a lot of music, in a lot of understanding, um, human understanding of music and especially a lot in modern music, doesn't um, matter which um, genre, bass um, is the way to go. <laughs> or there's a lot of interest in bass and uh, at, at least for me you need a lot to do in sound design to get like a perfect bass and I always had problems um, with that kind of frequency spectrum into a sound um, so I, I wanted to try and get better for myself and so I thought man, let's make the new season about sound designing bass Maybe we come to other sounds as well. Let's see how it works. So the first question is, um, what is bass? I mean sound. Sound is only a sound. It can have any frequency spectrum. So in bass we think about low notes. This is like unfiltered saw wave. You can take whatever you want. The lower the frequency, the more we um, recognize it as bass. Especially a sine wave because there is um, really less harmonic content. So we can go higher in the frequency spectrum and still recognize it as a bass. Let's go to the saw wave. You're already thinking not so about bass anymore. So let's introduce a filter. When I now go to a filter, let, let's go back to the sine wave. I mean, it's it's pretty high, but um, it's you only have the fundamental, so it's more recognizable as a bass than the saw wave because you have a lot of harmonic content above the um, fundamental frequency. So let's filter it down. You already have more of this bassy feeling to it. Let's tune it back down. So we are already in um, basic sound design. The, this is like the core concept of subtractive synthesis. You're feeding a, a, a high harmonic um, waveform like the saw wave and filter it down. So we are now more in, in a bassy territory. Doesn't matter, you can take a square wave as well, but it has another feeling to it. And that's also about sound design. It's like this little small changes. If I have a square wave or a saw wave, it's a different feel to it because it has different harmonic content. One has odd harmonics, one has even harmonics. Let's stick to the saw wave. What can we do to elaborate that further? Because it's not interesting to have a static bassy sound in the background and still even it's low harmonics I would say I would not generally recognize this as bass um, in most kind of music because there is bass is there is a movement into it if you go back into history of music you have like classic music and the bass content was from trombones, horns, um, 
contrabass, double bass, I think it's called in English. Um, even cellos can go pretty low. Um, when you go a little bit more into the future, you have bass guitars and you have a lot of movement into it. So I think like the basic general, um, how you say this, recognition of bass is also c coupled with movement. And we can, of course, introduce movement to introdu um, in introducing CV modulation of the bass of the, of the, of the filter. So um, I have, if I can show you, so. As you can see, I have the Patumi here, um, a four, LFO, four LFOs, it's in divide mode, so like all the four LFOs are in sync. Um, one LFO is on, um, on ramp down, and one LFO is on sign, and this LFO is, um, I think it's four times slower than the original LFO. And I have um, a VCA slash mixer here where I can mix both signals and um, attenuate them. And this goes back into the filter. Like w what I said was this kind of movement. Of course, you can do this with your hand. <laughs> but yeah, we can introduce CV modulation. And now I introduce the faster um, ramp down. Now we have a more um, recognizable bass. And again, it matters. Like these little changes, what you feed in. Right now it's the saw wave, square wave. It has a different feel to it and that's the most important thing about sound design. What feeling do you need, do you want? Does feeling matter at all, or is it only like the, the style of the sound, like is it sounding pretty cool, but that's a feeling as well. But yeah, let's go further. This is a really static sound. This is the next um, aspect of sound design. There is movement now through the LFO, but it's really static. So intro let's introduce the second LFO, and only by a small amount. Another movement. Go back to the saw wave. has another sound. Another aspect of synthesized basses, um, often recognized, uh, recognizable, um, is resonance. We are trained. Um, we are trained to have, <laughs> in like certain genres of music, to have resonance. <laughs> like as a techno, for example, you have a lot of that. So you see, like with a little twist of a knob, it's only resonance. Everyone knows about resonance, but you are kind of now in a really specific place and genre where I um, recognize this kind of bass. And this, for example, is like everything you associate with acid techno, acid house and stuff. Of course, you can use this in other kinds of genres, but you have as listener an imagination in which musical world I am in right now. Even without a four on the floor bass and stuff, you, you can hear where this is going. And when if I make this faster, it's even more recognizable. Adding a little bit of reverb. And let's go to the next aspect. Listen to it. I, I take the um um I'm removing the the, the slow LFO now. 
We are almost at a point where it sounds like a bass drum. Let's go slower. With the movement of the filter and the resonance, it's kind of as you would introduce, it's different, but it's kind of like you would introduce FM modulation on an oscillator. So you get, I know that's not your typical <laughs> breaky bass drum, but you are now in that territory. And we are still only one oscillator, one filter, right now one LFO modulation and a little bit of resonance. And we are kind of could use this as an underneath layer of a bass drum to get more bassy sound. So you can see, you can do a lot with little. Let's change the time division now. This is another important point. The feeling of a sound is not only the sound itself, but how you play it, in which time divisions you play it, how the movement is working. So now I think it's um, a division by, or it's like four times slower the second LFO. Let's go into an odd time division. And for example, let's modulate the frequency of the second LFO. Remember, they are all in sync to each other. It's only little changes, but you are in a, you have a different kind of feeling to the sound now. Let's open up the filter a bit. Let's modulate a little bit more. And now, this system of LFOs is so chaotic that the overall sound seems chaotic. I know it's still the same bass sound and it's only like really subtle, but we have a different kind of sequencing right now. But your feeling of the music that is happening is in a different place. I don't think any one of you would think now, oh, that's a nice acid track. But if I go back, now you would think, where's the fourth floor? You know what I mean? It's not. Um, Take all of this with a little bit grain of salt, but you know what I mean. I'm in a different place right now than before. 
And that's um, the beautiful thing about sound design. Sound design is not only about sound, at least for me. Sound design is the whole aspect of what you're doing <laughs> with your sound. And that means in a frequency way, in a modulation way, in a time perspective, in a sequencing perspective, everything you do um, adds to the possible outcome of the sound design. If I go back to my oscillator and go into the wave folding output, diving back the modulation, we are back to a sine wave, basically. So right now we were only in the aspect of um, sub subtractive synthesis. Another aspect um, is kind of like, this is not really additive synthesis, but um, like West Coast synthesis, it's like using a waveform, you have um, the basic waveform is a really low harmonic waveform, like sine wave or triangle. I think this is a triangle core, but I don't really sure. Um, and add harmonics through wave shaping or wave folding. And the fun part is, If I take this waveform and compare it to the saw wave, it's completely different. And we are back into basic territory. But you see, you need a little bit. I, I, I closed a little bit of the filter. You, you see, you again in a completely another um, territory of sonic sound. So this is um, kind of like the basics I wanted to show you before we go into more complex things. But you see, you can do a lot in sound design already in the, like with little knob twists or, or little modulate. We basically only have two modulations and there are two LFOs who are synced to each other. And the rest is an oscillator and a filter, nothing more. And I will um, cut, after this part, I will cut every, um, like, a collection of the sounds we um, already made with that um, small configurations. And you see, you can do a really lot with a basic setup. So, I show you this comparison now and then we move on. Bye. 
Yeah, as you can see, a little time has passed and I rewatched uh, the stuff I did earlier. I recorded earlier. And there's one point I, I wanted to make sure of. Um, I'm not a crazy producer who makes like chart swing songs or something like that. I'm a total hobbyist or amateur or. Um, the German word for it is dilettante. I don't know exactly what the English word is still attempt, I have no idea. But in Germany it's um, it's a little bit the, a word with a bad um, meaning today. But just Google the original meaning of still attempt. That's, it's really interesting also how that word changed over time. Um, yeah, basically I can say uh, like today a still attempt, you, you say to someone um, who makes something not really well. You use it in German for a person who like just starts as a videographer or cameraman and doesn't really know what he's doing. And the original concept of the word um, when it came up, I think it was in the 19th century or something in that, around that time. Um, and the, the, the basic meaning of it was that it w it's a person who um, is in who 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 does a job he never studied but he um, learned everything on it for for by himself. So it it basically has not a bad connotation to it. It only says like the knowledge he achieved or the the. The craftsmanship he can deliver is not given by an academy or a teacher or something. It only means that he he teached himself. <laughs> yeah, but just just Google it, and it's it's funny how that changed, or how that um, became a bad meaning to the word. But doesn't matter. O only what I want to say is like oh, everything I show you here is my opinion on the topic. It's my opinion about sound design. It's um, in the context how I make music, and uh, this is not a video where I show you some tips to make like crazy chart-breaking songs. No, not at all. I, I never made any song for um, anywhere in radio or something. It doesn't matter. Um, I do that stuff besides my job I have um, to get my head clear. So, but yeah, um, I'm not the truth. <laughs> I'm only here to show you what I think and what I find helpful because everything I tell you today was of course not there in my mind from the beginning. It was a long long ride full of errors to 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 get the, into the complexity of sound design and so let's make it more complex we only had like the lfo you can see here and like the oscillator um, up there and the filter more up there i need to look into the camera where my camera shows um and we only did the modulation um, because we only did the modulation with the LFO. And what I already said, what for, at least for me a big point is in sound design is the time domain and um, of course LFOs and cross-modulated LFOs are in, um, in the time domain. But we have other tools as well. We can use an envelope and I'm sure every one of you knows what an envelope is. So. Um, saving my time to explaining that only short attack decay sustain release here pretty standard envelope here we have two attack decay envelopes or rise and fall envelopes <coughs> but we start with the basic envelope basically the time to to yeah to reach the maximum amount 
of volume or whatever you're modulating, the time um, you, you, you need to get back to the sustain level at maximum or wherever you set it. This is kind of a level knob, this is not time based. And the release um, after you leave the sustain stage, how long it takes to go back to zero. But yeah, you all know that. And in this Depfer envelope, we have like a basic time switch, like short, middle and long. <laughs> so, um, and also what I wanted to say, uh, I, I forgot about it and I did a mistake in the, in the um, LFO that I used blue cables because normally I have a color coding scheme here, at least for my videos. Um, this pink color is modulation, like LFOs, envelopes and stuff. The blue color is my audio, like oscillators, like basically the audio pass. Um, this white color is basically clocking, triggers, and gates and stuff, also time domain. <laughs> and what else do we have? Oh yes, and we didn't use that one. Um, these purple ones are for volt per octave signals and sometimes when I run out of cables, I use, basically I'm always running out of white cables for clocking and gates and triggers and stuff. So, and I, I will mention this, but then I use these orange ones. So, let's get started. We can take one clock square from here to clock this envelope to make it really simple. And then we can take the original audio signal after the filter and take this VCA here. I'm starting with a VCA to make it more simple and take this VCA signal and send it back into our reverb. Basically, let's take the output and every one of you knows what's happening now. Like this knob is not a volume control anymore, it's an attenuator for the incoming CV signal. And you already see where this is going. You have different, different feelings to it. Um, it's different in sound design perspective. If I use, okay, I could make the release longer or release short and decay longer. And of course the sound gets longer, but it has a different um, feel to it. This rings out has a little bit more like a, um, like a low pass gate feeling. Of course it's not a low pass gate, but get what I mean and this only sounds like it's getting played longer if I have longer gate times we can you can introduce the sustain level tech level. I don't want to explain envelopes to you, but you already see this is um, different feelings to the sound. And let's get further and take the same, the same envelope and put it into the filter. Um, by the way, we are back to a saw wave, I forgot to say that. So, give me one second. What I did now, um, only too short, showing you is I utilized now all channels of whales and I put the audio signal on the last channel now, still with the envelope. And 
I mix the two LFOs with the envelope and this as a mix together goes to the filter. Introduce the envelope. Short percussive envelope and now the LFO. Different LFOs. Let's take a slower time of the LFO to get the longer gate on the envelope to play with the sustain again. And what I want to do now is cross-modulate the LFOs again. And decreasing the attack. So, so I rearranged that new patch and introduced the sound only with the envelope going to the VCA and going to the filter. I'm back on my wave shaping output. And introducing the first LFO to the further mount and I made the cross modulation a little bit simpler. And you already can see uh, as I separated these two modulations to the filter and one to the wave shaping. It's much more clearer. And I will introduce um, a second LFO only by a small amount.
So as you can see, you also can get um, good results in sound design if you separate modulation and really think about where I'm sending it. Also, if I change these two LFOs, it will alter the sound. As you can hear, it's a different kind of melody, um, not melody, sound. Making the envelope a little bit longer to ring out, bring a little bit of reverb. Also, I can think about, I don't really like this part to go, um, like not this part, but I, I found that this LFO up there was better. But so I take this and try. <laughs> I didn't try it before, this is not tuned, but I can use it to frequency modulate and that's another part of sound design, but I'm getting into that a little bit later, only showing you. Of course we have bipolar LFOs, so even if I put this high up, you get clean sounds because the negative part of the LFO But you see, different I make this really short. I can bring variation into some kind of percussive sound. The original LFO who went here, I put it back here. So yeah, but to give you an introduction about the next episode, because I think this is already getting too long. Um, yeah, we, we started a topic about frequency modulation. We can go, I think, a little bit deeper with the wave shaper. Um, there is sync. Oh, that's sweet. We are not in a bass territory right now, but that's really a sweet sound. That soft sync on. some nice spacey sound to do some cross modulation yeah <laughs> but look into the future hard sync soft sync we can talk a lot about that When we talk about frequency modulation, we can talk about carrier waves of the modulator, not, not carrier waves, but the, um, which wave the modulator has and stuff. Um, we need to talk about sequencing, we need to talk about, of course, I, I do it all the time, I never talked about, about time-based effects, reverbs, delays and stuff. And we definitely i think that's the, the 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 most next part we talk about in the next episode is um we need to talk about filters only to give you a small hint this was ripples in two pole mode but there are other filters as well how do they sound of course, filters sound different. What happens if I drive this filter? If I cross-modulate two cores into a filter? I 
if we wave shape the incoming signal how do different filters sound that's um, all stuff we need to talk about it was only a short a short glimpse on um, what we can talk about <laughs> sorry but yeah three filters three different sounds and that's also the small subtle scenes um, about sound design where a lot of people discuss a lot and fight a lot is it really worth it to have a lot of filters to have a lot of oscillators i want to go into that and yes i can say everything sounds different but um i also one of the persons who says you don't need 20 oscillators to be prepared for every sound design task you get in your life but it it it, it makes you more think about how do they sound all together this sounds at least for me really hi-fi this sounds extremely bubbly underwaterly heavenly cloudy it's like a smooth creamy filter the plates can sound however you want at least not not however you want but it has a drive section it's a wave shaper section and it's a beautiful i guess 12 12 db filter resonance can go pretty high you can use it in stereo mode and it has this sam if you know the sam from Oberheim, the same characteristic knob of the filter, who is continuous sweeping and stuff. But yeah, doesn't matter. That's um, for the next episode. But that's stuff to to talk about. And yeah, so I will leave you with all that unexplained information at the end. And I will play you out of the house.